Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here and welcome back to my art channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how I do my acrylic pouring window style painting using the Artist Loft Ready Mixed Paints. So I went ahead and already taped off what I think to be a window shape. I'm using frog tape here and I just kind of eyeballed it. The colors I'll be using are white, bright blue, which is actually more of a a blue violet, it's not really a bright blue. Violet. And I also usually use a metallic when I'm trying to get cell creation with this paint, so I'm using silver and then the aqua that I showcased first. I will be filling these cups with two layers of this paint. I think this paint is perfect for um, this technique, which is the flip and drag, to just promote more cell creation. I am gonna put three drops of silicone treadmill brand in the white only. If you add silicone to every color, you will get a cell explosion. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want a shit ton of cells. I don't know, that's up to you. But I like more control over the cells. I like them to be a little more sporadic. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the cups now. They are pretty consistent. They're two layers each, unless they're not. Gosh, I don't remember. They're, they're either two layers or two and a half or something like that. But they are consistent, meaning the at least the order is consistent. So the colors, the sequence you see the colors go in, that stays consistent. But sometimes I try to mix it up, like in that one I'm only I'm putting more purple in. Or maybe in one of them I'm putting a little more blue in, or a little bit more aqua. The only color that is very consistent is the silver. I try to put the same amount of silver in all of them because that does help promote cell creation. See that one I put in a little bit more bright blue. Beautiful! Good job, me! Now I'm just waiting a few minutes for the paint to drip down. I think I waited like five minutes. It doesn't take long because this paint is on the thinner side, as I've said in other videos using this technique. So I did not wait too long. I'm gonna be doing a flip and drag. I probably just could have not dragged it, but I, I did. <laughs> Ugh, don't do that. That's a terrible flip and drag. Look at those little, look at those spots at the end. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Do it like, like that. See how I drag it all the way off and it doesn't get all gooped up in one place? That's how you do it. So I'm gonna be saving some of the paint at the bottom of the cup so I can use those for ribbons. And now we tilt. You can tilt this however you want. Just keep in mind where your panes are actually gonna be, where the frame is going to be. If you want more color dominant, you know, tilt that in there, tilt other colors off, and just make sure that you tilt enough paint off of the canvas because it's with this paint it's hard to get cell creation if your paint is too thick. This is a thin paint but there can be you can have too much paint on your canvas. And I'm gonna go ahead with the ribbons. Oh, it's so I love ribbons. I have a ribbon obsession. They're so beautiful. Look at it go. Ooh, ooh crossing the ribbons. Such a rebel. So yeah have a ball. Now there is a such thing as too many ribbons. <laughs> I think I am just under that. <laughs> I'm just under the idea of too many ribbons because I was very excited. I had a lot of paint left and I just kept putting them in there. But they're very nice ribbons in my defense. You don't have to tilt the ribbons if you don't want to. The paint does tend to self-level, but I did it anyway because I just wanted to make sure that the ribbons were in the pane and they weren't all in the frame part. So I did do that a little bit. Oh, just when you thought I was done, bam! One more ribbon. <laughs> it's so exciting. Now I'm gonna use my heat gun on the lowest setting first. I'm not using the torch for this because the torch is too powerful. Uh, when the flame gets too close, it just creates so many cells automatically and maybe that's what you want maybe you want a ton of kind of webby cells I don't for this particular painting so I use it on the lowest setting first because sometimes with this paint sometimes I get a lot sometimes I don't like in this situation where I did put it on the higher setting 
So I'm doing two rounds. I did one round on a low setting. I wasn't happy with the amount I got. And then I did another round on the higher setting. Just trying to urge some of those cells up. Trying to get them in the pain, not on the frame itself. As you can see after that second round, um, more cells popped up. So I was pretty happy with that. So if you're thinking about tilting, don't! Do not tilt this painting. The reason why the cells are so round is because I'm not tilting them. If you tilt at this stage, the cells will stop looking like round bubbles and they'll look like, I don't know, stupid triangles. I could not come up with a simile, simile there. Do not come for me. Now I'm going to be removing the tape for you guys. Just some of it because it was kind of a long... It wasn't too long of a process. I'm exaggerating. It was an, an annoying process. You want to remove the tape when the paint is still a little bit wet because this paint dries glossy. So when it's too glossy, it actually rips off and it creates these little jagged edges. This paint, as you might be, you might be able to tell when I take off the paint, when I take off the tape, it's still a little bit wet, but it's not moving. So if I were to put my finger in there, it would still smudge but it's not going to move if you tilt it. It has stopped moving at this point. As you can see, as I'm removing the tape, I'm kind of lifting it upwards just so I have a really smooth line there. Oh, it's so satisfying, isn't it? That is so satisfying. And these edges aren't perfect, but I am going to be painting the frame, so I'm not too concerned. I'm going to take my popsicle stick and just kind of smooth down some of the more gloppy parts from the tape. But that's it, you know, you don't have to do too much with this. You do not have to worry about those thumbprints. I will be painting the frame. And uh, I just think it's beautiful. It is so pretty. I'm I was really worried about these cells because I'm always worried when I have to turn on the heat to a higher setting. I'm always afraid I'm gonna get webbing when I don't want that. I want them more controlled and more infrequent here. But I'm pretty happy with it. I got them in the panes like I really wanted to. I love the colors. I love that metallic. It's hard to capture on camera, but the metallic's just, it's so beautiful. And I love that cell right there. That's my favorite cell. <laughs> we all have favorite cells, don't we? These are some of my other windows that I painted. This is, I think, a 12 by 16 canvas. And same, same brand of paint, the Artist Loft, and when I painted it, I did a black frame and then silver around the panes themselves. And then this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it. That's actually copper. The camera's not picking it up. But that's copper and just a ring porter with ribbons for that one. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and my commentary. I will post the finished painting probably on my Instagram or my Twitter. There will be links in the description below. I actually use my Instagram way more for showcasing my paintings than YouTube itself. So definitely go check out my Instagram if you want to see more and I will update it when I decide what color frame I'll be using for this painting and when it's finished. Thank you so much for watching and as always I'll see you guys in the next one.